thank you so much for coming back to day two and for those of you who are new thank you so much it's lovely to see you here and uh, I do hope that you've managed to find the find the replays and everything else and uh, as I said if there's any problem with that just do send me an email and I'll make sure that you get the links and the workbook um, don't uh, don't worry about that just uh, send me a quick email and we can sort it out um, for you no problem at all so I would like you just because uh, we didn't have time yesterday I would really like it if everyone would introduce themselves in the chat so all you need to just say is who you are and uh, if you want to say a little bit more about about uh, what you do that would be wonderful hello Maud nice to see you so do uh, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat so that everybody can know where you are um, it's an it's an amazingly international group um, so do uh, do let us know where you are and uh, you can meet each other virtually so today is a session that I know um, that many of you have been looking forward to because having talked to a lot of you already um, in the, the 10 minute connect calls, um, I know that the issue of time is something that comes up for a lot of people. And I hear it so often, I don't have time. And particularly for people who are very busy, successful leaders, they've got a lot on, really life is busy. And they really feel that this, that time is, is a massive block. So today we're going to be looking at this because it can, all, it can almost feel, I think, with time as if you can't do anything about it. And we will be talking a little bit about that later on. So yesterday we talked about the need to find our purpose and to be driven by that and the need to look at purpose first and then looking at jobs and lifestyle and money and leisure time, looking at that second. And I think that's very important because it makes our decisions much, much easier. It makes us see the path much more clearly. And the transformation that we're looking for often at this point in our lives when we can feel at a, a crossroads, that transformation that we want, it's not just a change of a change of job that we're looking for necessarily. That transformation becomes much more possible because we we know, we know really the direction that we we want to go and guess what when we're really clear about that when we know what's important the change almost happens inevitably and that's the amazing thing about it it, it doesn't feel like a lot of effort it doesn't feel like a lot of work which is really great news so before we start on uh, on the, all of the, the work around time, I'd love to ask you about your homework from the last session. So your homework last, last uh, night was, and I'll just remind you, was to think about what is stopping you from following your purpose at the moment. So if you'd like to share your thoughts in the comments, please do go ahead. So the question is, or was last night, what is stopping you from following your purpose right now? Now you may think, well, I am following it a little bit. So what is what is stopping you from following it in, in really a full out way and really to the uh, to the full extent that you would really like it to be? So if you'd like to share it, do put it in the chat. No pressure at all. It's just interesting to share. And I think it's, as somebody said to me today when I was speaking um, to them in a, in a connect call, it's so nice to know that I'm not the only one who's thinking all of this. And absolutely you're not. And this is, this is why this challenge is so popular because so many people are feeling the same things. So you are certainly not alone and you're not the only person um, having, having these, these thoughts of well what uh, you know why is that why what's stopping me why why can't I find that clarity that I want so when we're thinking about those blocks it's, it's yes it's interesting yeah the need for clarity is, is absolutely vital isn't it when we've got that clarity it makes all the difference and Time is part of that in a sense, um, and I will come back to why that is. And people quite often say, you know, they just say, well, I'm, I'm too busy. Um, and, and I think there are three parts to this puzzle. And I think this time puzzle is, uh, there's, there's very good news because it's not that difficult 
to solve. It can feel like a big, big mountain, but in fact, it's not so difficult, I think, and from what I've seen with my clients. So we're going to look at three parts to it. The first one, why time isn't the real issue, according to me. The second one, why managing your energy is absolutely the key. And thirdly, how to then put yourself on the top of your to-do list. So that's the, that's the order, the structure for, uh, for today's session. So just let me introduce myself to those of you who haven't seen me yet. Um, so I am a leadership coach and I help successful senior leaders to rethink their purpose and really get clarity on those next steps and then actually to put that into action and make it happen. So I'm just going to tell you a little story about a client of mine. So let's call him Martin. And at the time, he was a very successful senior leader in a corporate environment. And he had a lot of pressure. He was in sales and his targets were never ending. There was always a new target. You know what it's like in sales. You, you sell a certain amount and then the next target comes up and you start again. So there was a lot of this ongoing pressure. He felt that he was non-stop firefighting, so non-stop sorting out problems. There was always something, always something, and he felt there was never enough time. He was feeling very tired, running on empty, not feeling particularly satisfied with all this, not enjoying his job and feeling quite stuck with it all. Couldn't see really a way out of this. And his first reason when I asked him, you know, what's, why, what's causing all of this? And he said the first problem was because he didn't have time. He didn't have enough time. He didn't have enough time to do his job. He didn't have enough time to think about his job. And he didn't have time to take a step back and think about the bigger picture and to think about what he really wanted. So time was certainly what he had identified. So we started working together and after just a couple of weeks of working together, um, I noticed that there was a real change in him. You know, in the first couple of weeks, he arrived looking quite stressed, looking quite tired. And then after those first few weeks, he appeared on Zoom and all of a sudden he looked quite different. He was quite He was calmer, he was more relaxed straight away, he was smiling and he said he felt different. He felt felt different even after these first two sessions. So what had we done? So we did a lot of work on his values and purpose, first of all. And I think that this was the turning point for him because he realised that in fact he didn't want to leave his job, but he wanted to do it differently. And he also realised that it wasn't time that was the problem. He needed to do his job differently. He needed to lead differently. But he needed also to have a vision to stop this firefighting, to to change that, to change that habit that we all so easily um, get, get into. He wanted to really to be a leader that was not focused on sales, even though he was a sales leader. He wanted to be a leader that actually empowered his team. Now, there's a big difference, really a massive difference. And for him, that was the purpose. He would realised that the sales, whilst that was important for his job, they were important, but that wasn't where his purpose was. So with this discussion, with this co- with these coaching conversations, of course, his daily job didn't change. There were still problems. It was still nonstop sales targets. All that stuff was still there. But the fact that he connected with his purpose and knew that he wanted to empower his team to actually change the way that he was thinking about his job, change the way that he was doing his role and started to change the way that he organized his day because he decided, well, actually, the time he spent with his team sorting out the problems was also an opportunity to empower them and to help them along their way, which was what his purpose was. So all of a sudden, that firefighting that was still firefighting had a purpose and it had there was a level of satisfaction in that as well. So we hadn't found him any more time in the day. 
But finding him that purpose had given him a focus and possibly I would say more confidence as well to to focus on that area of empowering people. But most importantly, I think it gave him a vision of how he wanted to do his job. It wasn't it wasn't just about ticking the box, making the sales. It was about a bigger picture than that. So he moved forward with his leadership and, uh, and he's now doing all sorts of all sorts of things with that. And and he's and he's doing extra courses and and he has no time. No, uh, no, sorry. He has no problem finding time for that. So I think that also shows again, he's he was somebody who was really at the at the point where nothing was possible because there was no time. And he's now adding in more study because that's what he wants to do. So this isn't to say that that people are busy. They are. But by changing the way that we're thinking about our roles and thinking about our jobs or changing them completely, perhaps in some in some cases, we can change that feeling of being a hamster running around and doing something that's not maybe very satisfying for us. So I wanted to tell you this story and, and I'd like you to keep it in mind for a number of reasons. Firstly, the change can be rapid. You know, with him, after two sessions, so that was two weeks, there was a, a real change, a change that he noticed and a change that I could see quite clearly. Secondly, the power of purpose, we come back to that. It's absolutely key. When we've got that in place, we can start to think about these other things in a different way. And thirdly, please don't believe the myth that time is the problem. Let's question that and challenge that. And so many people get caught up in this myth of busyness. And I would like you to think very, very uh, honestly, is that you? I know for me that it's been a big change to move away from this, from this feeling. The first response was, oh, I'm so busy. And it's been a, it's it's a big habit to change. It's an ingrained habit that I've probably had for, oh goodness, a long time. So, changing that habit, changing that automatic thought, is is quite a journey in itself. But I'd like you to just think about it yourself. Do you actually ask yourself that question? You know, do you think that you're too busy? Do you say that I'm too busy? So in the chat, I'd just like you to say, how do you feel about time? And is it an issue for you? Um, just type yes or no if you'd like to. Otherwise, no problem at all. No, but energy is a problem. Okay. We're coming on to energy. And time is a problem and motivation. Yes, now for, for motivation, the purpose is, is really the key. When we've got the purpose in place, motivation will be much, much easier. Yeah. Okay, so just keep thinking about that and we will come back to that. So if you're, if you're somebody who does feel too busy to think about your career or too busy to think about yourself, um. There is lots out there on the market. You know, you can buy books on productivity. You can find lots of videos on YouTube. Um, one of my favorite is all about the five o'clock in the morning club. I'm sure you've seen the uh, the advocates of getting up at five o'clock in the morning and ready to do your, you know, to do your exercise and do your journaling and go running and uh, run up a few mountains. Mud can do that in Switzerland. So, you know, it's, uh, there, there are lots and lots of things about productivity that you can that you can find and I think there are lots of good tips that I could give you on productivity and they are useful but I'm sure you know those already I'm sure that you know how to block your time how to switch off your phone how to switch off notifications I know that you know all of that already so what is important is all of that is important and it does make a difference certainly but what I want you to do today is to actually challenge you to change what you think is the problem. 
So as you've probably guessed, you know, I'm going to tell you that time isn't the problem at all. And you might not like this idea. And, and I'm not surprised because in our time pressed culture, it goes against the grain because we've we've grown up with this idea. We haven't we've grown up with this idea that we don't question it. When someone says they're too busy, we don't really question it. It would almost be rude, wouldn't it, to say, "Really? Are you really too busy?" It's it, we don't we don't tend to do it, and particularly our working culture is. It's very acceptable to say that we're too busy and that time is scarce. We never have enough. And and I think that being busy is is so part of that working culture that it's quite hard to even question it. But that's what I'm going to ask you to do. And we also talk about busy being busy all the time, don't we? Um, you know, the first question after how are you? Um, people might say, well, I'm fine, but I'm very busy. How often do we hear that during the day? All the time, all the time. And it's, a, it's often an automatic response as well. And people often say to me, um, because I have, I have two businesses and quite a lot going on with lots of activities and this, that and the other, and people often say to me, oh, you must be very busy. And I say, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not busy. I, because I do one thing at a time. So honestly, my days are full, but I'm not busy. And I don't know whether that makes sense. But if you if you're doing one thing at a time, for me, I don't feel I don't feel busy because I'm I'm not I'm not multitasking. And that's I think is 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 a big part of it. The second thing, which is maybe even more um, controversial, that I'm just was was interested by what happens when we say that we're too busy. I wonder if you have noticed how it closes the conversation. So when you ask someone if they want to do something and they say, oh, I'm too busy, it stops the conversation, doesn't it? Because we don't question it. And it's... As, as I said, it's, it's almost intrusive, almost rude to ask a little bit more. Well, are you really? Are you really too busy to do that? It's, it is really difficult. And in the same way, I think what happens with ourselves is that when we tell ourselves that we are too busy, we stop the conversation with ourselves because it's just it's it's we're, we're no longer seeing it as a symptom of something. We're seeing that as the cause that's the problem. So I'm too busy. Stop. That's it. But is it the cause of the problem? Why do we say it? And I think we say it because it closes the conversation. Simple as that. Because it's the it's the ultimate it's the ultimate excuse if you like that no one dares to challenge. And so and if someone says to you that they're too busy to meet up for a coffee, you're probably not going to tell them that they're wrong. Um, but it doesn't mean that we have to believe it and accept it for ourselves. And what I would urge you to do is not to close that conversation with yourself. If you hear yourself saying to someone else or saying to yourself, I'm too busy, keep that conversation open. You may well have lots of things to do, but just work out what the problem really is. So what is the solution to all of this? So I think I would like to suggest to you three, three different parts to it. Firstly, yes, doing the obvious things, blocking the time, using technology in a sensible way with boundaries, not sending emails at 11 o'clock at night, planning ahead, using your diary, all of those things, not multitasking, doing one thing at a time. That's the simple stuff. Then, secondly, keeping that conversation open with ourselves. Why are we really saying that we're too busy to do something? Is it that we just don't want to do it? Let's be honest. I don't want to do it. Fine. Let's be honest about what that is and why we're saying that. Because be clear on your purpose. If you're saying no, because it's not aligned with your purpose, it's not important to you. Be honest about that. Be honest with yourself about that. And make sure that we're telling ourselves the right message, that we're really being honest about why we're doing things and why we're not doing things. 
Thirdly, let's see time differently. And this is possibly the bit that's a bit, uh, that might be a bit different. And this is where we're coming on to part two here is why managing your energy is really the key, I believe. So how could we challenge that idea that time is, is so important? Well, I think what we can do really is that first of all, we can, we can really decide not to buy into the busy culture. And personally, I just, uh, I, f I find it tiring to be in that busy culture. So we can decide to opt out, first of all, and we can stop ourselves from, from saying, I'm too busy. Um, we can try to, we can try to um, give ourselves permission to say, you know, actually, I'm sorry, I'm tired. That's why I'm not doing it. I'm tired. I've done a lot today. No, I don't want to do that. I'm tired. I can't. I'm, I'm, ready, for a, I'm ready for a break. Let's be honest. But it's difficult to step out of those, of those habits, isn't it? And I think I've found it that it's easier when we start from a different place. And if we start to manage our energy rather than our time, I think it becomes much, much easier because we can start to think about what we really need. So what do you want to invest your energy in? Now, this to me is the absolute fundamental point of this. What do you want to invest your energy in? This comes back to your purpose, obviously. This links in with everything that we talked about yesterday. So please, if you have your workbook, please look back at what you wrote and look at your purpose. Check, is that where you want to put your energy? If it's not, maybe go back and look at that again and do that exercise again of asking those three whys. Quite often we need to do it a number of times to be, to be sure that, we're, that we are thinking about all the different possibilities. So in your workbook now, I would like you to think about your purpose, think about where you want to be investing your energy. And I would like you to ask yourself the question, how could we think about time in a different way? And what changes would you start to see when you manage your energy rather than your time? Now, I think what happens when we do this is that we start thinking about where we want to invest our energy, our most important resource, a limitless resource. And that's what's so incredible about it, because it is limitless. And you might think, well, no, it's not. I need to sleep. But you can recreate that energy. Time is not something we can recreate. But with energy, we can. We can boost our energy. We can find more energy. We can rest and have more energy afterwards. So when we start to see energy as our most precious resource, rather than time, we start to have more possibilities. So we can spend energy and boost energy and we can cultivate that positive energy as well. And we can also plan ahead. So we can think, well, in the next day, I'm going to, I'm going to use a lot of energy. So I'm going to make sure that I plan in something to boost the energy. So I'll give you a very concrete example. So today, so I knew I was going to be working late today. So it's for me in France, it's nine o'clock at night. So it's quite a late time to be um, delivering, delivering a coaching session. So what I did this morning was that I made sure that I went out and I got some exercise. I had an hour and a half on my bike this morning, went out in the dark. But I knew I was planning ahead because I knew that I was going to need a boost of energy for this evening and for me and it's going to be different for everybody for me I know that if I do some exercise that is actually it doesn't keep it doesn't wear me out because I I probably don't do it uh, with enough uh, with enough um, enthusiasm we could say so I know that it's actually going to boost my energy not deplete me so I'm planning ahead for that I also know that I can't work from nine o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night just not possible. So by adding in my, my, bit of, my bit of sport there, what I was doing was two things. I was making sure that I wasn't spending too much energy and I was also boosting that energy. Okay.
So that's a very, that's a very, um, it's a different way of thinking to, instead of looking at my day thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so busy today. I didn't do that. And actually, as a result, I've had a lovely day, to be honest. It's been very nice. And I was lucky it didn't rain when I was doing my, my cycle this morning. So we can plan ahead because it's not scarce. We can always find we can always find it. We can boost it. We can we can really look after ourselves in that sense. So we can choose to invest our energy in activities and we can we can choose not to invest our energy. So we can decide how we're going to use it. We're so, we have so much more control over it than time. So in your workbook, I would like you to have a look at the next question and, and just have a think. And for you, this may not make a difference. Everyone is different. But what difference would it make for you if you thought more about managing your energy rather than your time? Would that make a difference to you? And if you think it would, how would that, how would that make a difference for you? So I'm just going to give you a few minutes there to write down, write down your thoughts. And before you answer that question, if you're struggling to answer that, think about a time in the week where time is an issue for you. So maybe there are crunch points in your week where time is, you're thinking, oh, well, that actually is really a tricky time. There's a, there are a lot of demands on you. So maybe you're working too much, for example, at the weekends or in the evenings. Maybe you don't have energy to focus on your health as much as you would like to. Maybe you want more energy when you're with your family. But, uh, whatever it is for you, what would you, what would you prefer to be doing and how how could you how would it change things if you thought about your energy and a big question if you're again if you want some more ideas the big question to be honest is what change would it make if you invested your energy in your purpose now that for me is the big one if you're ready for that one So for those of you listening to the replay, do use this time to write in your in your workbook. And if you don't have the workbook, do send me a mail and I will make sure you have it. So for those on Zoom, we will have a little look at those later on when we switch off the recording. Um, I hope that has maybe stirred some stirred some thoughts and it will be something that will take some time to to come back to and as i said the big question is what change would it make for you if you invested your energy in your purpose so we're coming to the last section for this evening and this is how to put yourself at the top of your to-do list. Because this again is an issue that lots of people say to me that they don't have time to think about what they want to be doing in the future. They don't have time to invest in thinking really about their options um, right now. So how do we do that? So putting yourself on the top of your to-do list is just so important. I think that's the first thing is is to is to see the importance of it and putting yourself but also your personal development putting that on top of your list. Um, even if it's not on your on the top of your list every day, but if you can make some room for it, it you will see a difference. Because if you want to change, if you want to transform your life, you need to give it the time that it deserves to decide on firstly what you want to do and then to actually make it happen. And making it happen is a very important part of the coaching process because having lots of great ideas and interesting discussions is all very nice but without the action without uh, deciding what to do and actually taking the action nothing actually happens 
So what I would like you to do is we're, I'm going to tell you three three things that in your workbook you can uh, note down as well. So the three steps to really putting yourself at the top of your to-do list. So the first one I would say is being very aware of your energy. What do you need for that? What do you need to boost your energy? Because often it's not a problem of spending the energy, it's often a problem of replenishing and boosting that energy. And and let me tell you one thing, it is not beautiful smelly candles, much as I love those, but smelly candles is not going to do it. Spa trip, probably not going to do it either. And I'm thinking of the little things. What are the little things that you can do? So for me, for example, a cup of tea in my hands. Um, and I've always used this even when I was even when I was teaching, when just having a cup of tea in my hands. So like this, take a cup of tea in my hands and I can sit just for a few minutes and that can give me such a boost in energy. I don't need very long. And I think for me, it's about it's a circuit breaker. It's a case of okay, let go of all of that. And it gives me that little boost. It doesn't take very long, but I know for me that works. What else could it be? So for me, again, um, there are little things. Talking to friends, for example, is a big one for me. Having Having a quick chat, even if it's just a WhatsApp conversation, a quick chat with friends gives me a great boost in energy. Um, exercise for that uh, exercise definitely I know I need a lot and it's taken me quite a long time to actually um, realize that but I've got there in the end and I know that I need a lot of exercise to boost my energy and I think I'm, I'm not I'm not probably alone in that I think breathing and visualizing what I'm going to do that also gives me a lot of energy I don't really know why, but it does. I think for me, having the clarity of what I'm going to do um, gives me that boost to actually get going and get it done and get started. Talking to family and friends is obviously a big part of it Um, and connecting, reconnecting with people, connecting, spending time and enjoying spending time with people. That for me is is very, very important. So what I would like you to do now is think, what's what is it for you? What do you need? And they're not going to be the same things um, that, that I need. What do you need? What works for you? So just write down, just make a note of just two or three easy things. And I would really like to make sure that you you focus on things that you can do at any time of the day. So, yes, forget the spa trips. Choose something that you can really do right now, in the moment, any time. Something that's accessible and quick and, and works. The second one positive energy and i think this is that this is key as well and again for every person this is going to be very different where do you get your positive energy from so is it from people or is it from being on your own is it from um sitting sitting quietly with a book having some time or is it being outdoors for a lot of people being outdoors um is 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 a very quick way to boost energy other pe- for other people, spending time with other people, doing activities. So it's very related to the first one. But the first one is being aware of that energy. And the second one is really focusing on, well, that positive energy. Where are you going to get that from? And part of that is being able to receive that energy and being open to receiving it. So if you're in, if you're outside and you find that that really helps you, how can you make the most of that? Is it by standing and and just looking at the uh, looking at the trees, or um, what is it that uh, that you do that can help you to actually receive that energy? What do you need? And again, it's going to be different for everybody. And finally, all of this often circles back on actually how we manage our emotions, because we need to learn to reset. We lose a lot of energy by feeling stressed by feeling um, frustrated or angry or irritated or any of those emotions that, that that are difficult, they take a lot of energy. 
Now, there's lots we could talk about um, in terms of emotions, and I'm, I'm not going to discuss it to today, but I'm going to tonight show you one easy and very quick technique that you can use every day to get that reset and to, to just flip back into what should be a calm and positive state. So what I'm going to like to do now is, and I invite you to do this, and if you don't want to, it's absolutely, there's no pressure at all. I'm going to do a quick meditation with you. Um, for those of you on Zoom, do feel free to switch off your cameras, get comfortable, and close your eyes. And if you... If you are comfortable to do that, then follow along with me. If you'd rather not, just take the moment to relax and maybe look at your, your notes that you've written. But if you're happy to do that, if you're comfortable to come along with me in this meditation, then just gently really get comfortable in your chair. Close your eyes and just start to focus on your breathing. And start to be aware of the sounds around you. Maybe you can hear the sound of your computer whirring away. Maybe you can hear the dishwasher in the next room. Maybe you can hear children around you. Maybe you can hear neighbours or cars outside. And then notice that notice the smells. Maybe you can smell your cup of tea that's next to you. And come back to your breathing. And make those Make that breathing relaxed, but deep, deep breathing. So what are you grateful for in your life at the moment? And what do you want What do you want to do when you put yourself on the top of your to-do list? What are the kinds of things that you would like to have time for? What are the kinds of things that you would like to have energy for? And I would like you to imagine what, what is it that you need? What do you need to put yourself on the top of your to-do list? And I want you to imagine that you have whatever it is that you need. What emotions? What type of energy do you need? How do you need to be feeling? And I want you to step into that, step into that lovely list that you've just made. And I want you to feel all of that and come back to the two key questions. What are you grateful for? And what do you need to put yourself on the top of your to-do list? So what I would like you to do now is just turn to your workbook and I would like you to just write down a couple of things about what do you need to do for you. How could you create more energy for yourself? So I would like you to write it down in the workbook. What do you need
Okay, so feel free to put your cameras back on. And maybe in the chat, if you'd just like to say, uh, if you'd like to share with, share with us, how did that feel? Um, what did you notice? Did anything come up for you? Did you find, uh, did you find something that might, that might help you? And for your homework, I'd like you to continue to think about this. How could you create more energy for you? to think about your career, to think about what your next steps are. How could you create that energy? What do, you, what do you need? So that's a continuation of what we just thought about in the meditation there. So try to just come back to it tomorrow gently. With all of these questions, don't worry if you haven't got a reply straight away. It's very normal that that happens. And it can quite often be two days, two weeks, even longer sometimes. So don't worry if you don't have a quick answer. These questions are not designed to be done in, in 40 minutes, in fact. These are designed to be done with, with time, with space. So take that time and space and, uh, and just notice if a certain question is difficult. There's no judgment. There's no right or wrong answer. And just notice because in fact, if a question is difficult, maybe the first question is to ask, well, why is that difficult? So no judgment, just relax and the answers will certainly come. Okay, we're going to be finishing there. Just a quick um, bit of housekeeping. If you haven't yet booked your Connect call with me, please do. Um, so you can do that with the link in the email that you should have received. If you haven't got the link still, then let me know and I'm very happy to send it to you again. So do book up those because places are becoming quite uh, limited now. Um, I'm going on holiday on Saturday, so I have a bit of a deadline. Um, so normally I have a, a little bit more time over the weekend to give to people but this week unfortunately um, I don't have that so please make the most of these next couple of days. So thank you so much for coming. So tomorrow we're going to continue our journey thinking about how we can feel more courageous tomorrow and in particular we're going to be talking about the inner voice. So that little voice in our heads which can sometimes get the better of us and can be very powerful but we want to make sure that it's powerful in the right way and that can really help us unblock some of the uh, some of the things that get in the way some of the obstacles so for those on zoom do stay and join me for a quick discussion about tonight's session i'd love to hear what you think about um, time and energy and for those listening on the podcast do join us again for part three tomorrow either live or via the audio on leaders who love what they do thank you so much <laughs>